Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Brad Ellis of Wyvern Gaming, and we're going to talk about Stargate SG-1 RPG, which I'm really excited about because I love the show. SG-1 is just classic. There's some great, great sci-fi episodes in, in that series um, and great characters and everything. So, Brad, uh, what's what's your role? I would say my role, um, <laughs> uh, we wear many hats uh, in, in companies like this. So... My official title is CEO of Wyvern Gaming, but uh, <laughs> what does that mean? It means I do a lot of different things, but um, so mostly project management, product management uh, of the, the game itself, all, but also, you know, help with the game design and helping, you know, get the, the artist uh, drawing the right things and getting the, the book to look the way it should, getting things laid out the way it should. Um, I also have a lot of uh, graphic design stuff that I do and um, really just making sure that things are moving forward. And uh, you probably see me commenting on the Kickstarter all the time and <laughs> all kinds of things. So sales and marketing also is also one of the hats I wear. So man of uh, many, many things. <laughs> you so, so I have to ask, um, yeah. let's talk about first who you can be in, in uh, this RPG. What's, what, is, what options are available? Sure, sure. So uh, the backstory for this, we wanted uh, we wanted to, to open it up a little bit beyond just being able to be a human from Tauri Earth. Um, that was kind of what the last RPG of this did, um, and we wanted to expand on that a little bit. So what we did is we created a um, we put it in the storyline of season six around episode nine, and. In that particular episode, this is when the Jaffa and the Tauri, I mean, the, the Tauri and the Tok'ra are all starting to come together and form, you know, kind of alliances. We find them at the Alpha Site in particular, uh, where they fight off a, a, a threat there at the Alpha Site, where it actually becomes compromised. So our story for this uh, for this setting takes uh, kicks off at that point, where. Um, basically, the story goes, the, the U.S. government decided that it's time to start a new site that would be a coalition of forces uh, that would be an off-world site, and that site is called Phoenix Site. So it's under the control of Stargate Command, um, but it's, it's like I said, it's a coalition of uh, Tok'ra, Jaffa, Unas, and a new race uh, called Achurin um, are all part of this coalition of basically freedom fighters from across the galaxy to fight off the Gua'uld. So those are the options for races, is basically human, Jaffa, Tok'ra, Unas, and Achurin. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to be stuff like uh, uh, roles for like being a scientist and soldiers, similar to Yeah, like yeah. That. So we've got six classes in the game. Um, we have a diplomat, we have engineer, medic, scientist, scout, and soldier. Oh, okay. Um, yep. I I heard that they're you're using the open license from Five E Dungeons and Dragons for this system. Right. Um, how's the transition to use those rules for this for this world for these worlds? I should say. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you traditionally think of uh, Fifth Edition as you know a fantasy setting, and we had to translate that into a, a sci-fi modern uh, kind of game. So we uh, we did we scooped out the magic and replaced it with technology, if you will. And we did some things also that, that, that felt better, um, kind of in the way that the, the game, that if you watch the TV show, there's certain things that happen that, that just feel like, like if you just had this, you know, 20th level paladin type character that was like uber awesome, that would be kind of weird in the, the Stargate world. So mm. one of the things that we decided to do was we actually make the game classless after fifth the fifth level so once once you've leveled up to, to fifth so you start out as one of those those six classes that i mentioned but once you get to to sixth level you can start taking feats from from um from a general pool spending your your experience points or your mission points as we call them um to to buy the feats and as you, as you spend those feats you gain levels in the system so that's really a neat way of Having the way that like Daniel Jackson started out uh, in the show, uh, he was a you know uh, a scientist and he didn't really 
shoot a gun very much, but towards the end of the show, he was he was very capable handling himself with a weapon. So it's it's kind of that way of, of doing that thematically. Is, is this book going to be to be based on just the SG One universe? Will it be, will it touch on Atlantis or the books or anything like that or the movie? Sure, sure. So um, the book covers everything between. So the content in the book covers everything that's happened prior to season one. I'm I was prior to season six, um, including season six in the Stargate SG-1 universe. So, um, of course, that includes things that, that probably happened in the Stargate movie because, I mean, they happened in this Stargate SG-1 show. Um, and we placed it right there at that particular point because we're only like one season away from Atlantis, right? So you can imagine that if things go well <laughs> and our Kickstarter does what we hope it does, um, and it has so far, that that we'll we'll be hoping to do expansions here in in the in the next uh coming years okay okay what enemies can one expect in this game well if you know the show you can you can imagine what you can what you'll find so you, you of course you're gonna have goa wolves you're gonna have replicators you're gonna have um just unknown species that you haven't met before um we have rules in the book on on creating new new monsters um so the great thing about Stargate is you can go through this gate, right? And you can show up anywhere. You you can you can show up in an old western, you can show up in a a, a place that's completely replaced by robots. It's it just depending on what kind of game you want to have any given week, you go through the gate and you have that type of that game. So we modeled the uh, the life forms chapter of our of our book so that you can it's it's obviously it's got some templates of things that you can you can face. But um, it's also got some rules on how to create things right off, right you know, from full from whole cloth. So you, if you, if you can imagine it, there's there's rules in there that that should help you get to pretty close to what you want, and then you can kind of tweak from there. Okay. What can you tell us about the art uh, coming out for the book with the book? Sure, sure. So um, our our main artist, uh, his name is uh, Wayne Graham. I'm sorry, Wayne uh, Miller. Um, and he is, uh, he actually last, well, I can't count last Gen Con, but the Ennies, the last time that they had it in person, uh, he won, uh, best cover art for his, uh, his, uh, Call of Cthulhu, um, cover that he had done. So, um, he's a wonderful artist. This is a piece that's behind me, uh, <laughs> uh, that he did, but, uh, you can also see, uh, our image of our cover it's everywhere uh right now and that's that's also in there and if you go to our kickstarter page there's a ton of uh art that's from the book that's that's from him um he's an extremely talented um artist and we've been working with him for quite a while and um we're, we're just glad to have him on the project stretch goals uh what what yep. are you hoping to reward um these fans sure sure so as we unlock more and more of the uh as the funding level goes up and up and up, we're able to do more because we have you know more capability. So uh, we've already unlocked four stretch goals. Uh, we've got a, a Phoenix Sight patch. So if you want to role play as your Phoenix Sight uh, character, you can. Um, we've got, we added new content to the book already uh, from opening up some stretch goals. Uh, we've made available a uh, Gate Master screen, which Gate Master is what we're calling GMs or game masters uh so it's a it's going to be the thing that you roll your dice behind uh we've actually opened up a new digital online character sheet which is uh really cool so you'll be able to go on to stargatertpg.com our website and uh, build a character from the ground up um so now we'll be able to fund the development of of that in particular so that's coming uh those so those those four things that i just mentioned are unlocked and then things that are coming in the very near future, uh, when we reach the next threshold, we have a, a side mission that we're going to produce uh, that everyone will get for free uh, that has purchased the, 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 the hardcover book. Um, that is an adventure, basically, that you can that, that you can use to go on uh, right out the gate with your with your friends. Um, so that'll be one of the things that's uh, available. We have some ability of some custom dice that are coming up. 
So you want some a set of uh, your D20 dice that's got some uh, uh, Stargate symbols on it and things like that. That's that's what we're going to show. We got some mock-ups of that coming here in the near future. So we look for updates on that. And then we've uh, potentially got some map tiles uh, that we want to do. So the Phoenix site itself, we want to have a, a actual map of that that you can use your miniatures on to to play the game. And this one's really cool. Um, we've unlocked. Oh, well, it's not unlocked yet. It's a uh, it. I, we're pretty sure that we're going to get there, but um, we're going to make available digital STL files uh, for miniatures. So if you're not familiar with what an STL file is, it's it's basically the the file that you need to do a 3D print of a thing. Uh, so we're going to have the our I, we have seven iconic characters that that are part of our Phoenix One um, team, and we're doing uh, those miniatures. Uh, in, a, in 3D models that we'll make available to uh, uh, to our backers. And then there's there's a plethora of other uh, things that are on the roadmap. Um, what has been revealed so far is not everything. So we're hoping that that uh, the more we get, the more we can we can get in everybody's hands. Where can people go to uh, uh, spend their money and get this right away? <laughs> so the easiest easiest place to go first is uh, StargateTheRPG.com. Um, and there's a link at the very top of the page that you can jump over to our Kickstarter from. Also, I would suggest uh, joining that community. So if you, uh, if you haven't already, sign up on that website because we put out news and information on that on that site quite often. And it's also going to be the hub of where you can build your character and stuff like that. So, um, again, it's StargateTheRPG.com. Excellent. I will put it in the description below. I got one more thing. Ooh, ooh, okay. Yeah. So something really exciting that's about to happen. On October 18th, um, we have a gameplay that's going to happen live. Uh, it's going to happen on the... Um, Dial the Gate channel. Uh, if you guys are not, maybe or may or may not be familiar with this, it's just starting up. Um, but we have an all-star cast of Stargate cast members that are going to be playing the Stargate SG-1 role-playing game. So we've got uh, David Hewlett, Alexis Cruz, David Blue, uh, Julie McNeven, uh, Simon Bale, and Rainbow Sun Franks that are going to be sitting down at the table, virtually of course, um, and playing playing the game. So we'll be broadcasting that live uh, on October 18th at 2 p.m. Pacific. Wow, that's really amazing. Um, that's that's really exciting. Wow. Well, Brad, th thank you for sharing that. Um, I can't wait for the book. Um, and to our viewers out there, uh, thank you for watching. Um, stay tuned for more gaming content. Have a great day.